providing the following. <coughs> the appointment of deputies of the Attorney General, the establishment of the Attorney General as the Chairman of the Attorney General's Office Board, and the incorporation of law officers and legal, legal advisors in <coughs> different ministries under the administration of the Attorney General. Cabinet also received a report, uh, a proposal by the Minister of Finance and Economic Development on reforms for the Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority, ZIMPACS. The proposed ZIMPACS turnaround strategy principally seeks to address the prevailing state of poor corporate governance, operational ineffectiveness, and the suboptimal utilization of the resources under ZIMPACS. Cabinet accordingly resolved as follows, that the commercial division of ZIMPACS be hived off to a special purpose vehicle in order to unlock the value in the commercial assets currently owned by Zimpax through joint venture arrangements with private sector partners. It also resolved that the initial capital investment equivalent to 11.9 million be injected towards the acquisition of modern anti-poaching equipment, support equipment, operational vehicles, support for national park management activities, and maintenance of infrastructure. It also resolved that the RTGS 21.5 million debt owed by Zimpax be restructured so as to allow the authority more time to pay off the debt. And that the necessary legislative review be undertaken so as to inter alias strengthen the management and operations of Zimpax as well as to ensure the balance between the need to guarantee wildlife protection and to provide for other competing <coughs> land uses. And finally, that the governance structures of the authority be strengthened in accordance with the provisions of the Public Entities and Corporate Governance Act. That was uh, the report from the Minister of <coughs> Finance on Zimpax. Then Cabinet received a report from the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade on the recent forum on China-Africa Cooperation FOCAC coordinators meeting which was held in Beijing in China from 24th to the 25th June 2019. The objective of the meeting was to review the implementation of the 2019-2020 action plan. Cabinet expressed great appreciation for the offer of a free grant of, of RMB, which is the Chinese money, 400 million, which is equivalent to about US 60 million, by the People's Republic of China towards the recovery and reconstruction program arising from the Cyclone Idai disaster. A further 6 million RMB, which is about US 870,000 US dollars, this is a grant which was also extended to Zimbabwe for the acquisition of forestry equipment. Then we also received a report on the energy and power supply situation in the country. The Minister of Energy and Power Development, Honorable Chassi, briefed Cabinet on the prevailing fuel and power supply situation in the country. The Minister informed Cabinet that during his engagement with players in the fuel supply chain, it had become very clear that the sector was still riddled with business malpractices which militated against the smooth supply of the product to the market. As part of the measures to address this unsavory state of affairs, a system to track the movement, of the movement and distribution of fuel was already at the initial stage of installation. Pertaining to power supply, the Minister briefed Cabinet that the Ministry was already working on an integrated power development strategy amid indications that several investors were quite keen to invest in power generation projects in the country. The Minister is also currently assessing the status of the various energy projects 
so that when necessary <coughs> licenses can be cancelled, a new bidder is invited for those projects that have not yet taken off the ground. The Minister is also working on a framework to ensure that the suppliers of liquefied gas sell the product to consumers in safe places and at fair prices rather than the prevailing exorbitant prices for this product. Then there was also a discussion on the introduction of monocurrency. Cabinet noted with satisfaction that the generality of Zimbabweans have positively embraced the recent introduction of the monocurrency, which had prompted the massive fall of the parallel market rate. Cabinet underscored the need to continue addressing the concerns by various sections of the citizenry through timelessly availing the necessary information in the implementation of the necessary supportive and confidence building measures. Cabinet also calls on the business sector and service providers to be considerate and humane in the manner they peg their prices. It is our common interest to create a competitive and business-friendly environment which fosters investor confidence and decent livelihoods to our people. I thank you. Yes. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Ladies, we now expect some questions in the briefing. I will take uh, the first session four questions. Today, I will stick to the numbers. I'm not going to overextend like last two weeks. Yes, please, your name and your organization. Uh, Cyrus Nara, Al Jazeera. This is a question for Minister of Energy. Uh, do we have any timelines or any indication of when energy issues can be resolved in this country? Power fuel. Um, do we <coughs> foresee at any time being adequately supplied? Thank you very much. Another? Yes, please. My, my name is from the Sunday Mail. I think my question is closely related to, to, to the previous question. I just the minister to shed more light on, on the MITI general strategy for, 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 for the energy crisis. Which supplies are we are we are we talking about? And specifically, given that you've paid part of the debt to, to ESCOM, is there a chance that we'll be getting power from from ESCOM? Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? The bag I'm asking. Is there anybody there? Yes, please. Good afternoon. My name is Belinda. I'm from Zimpapers TV yeah. Network. Uh, my question, I think, would be addressed to uh, the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs um, or the Minister of Information. I wanted to ask if Cabinet, um, I know you haven't mentioned it in your report, but the uh, Attorney General uh, recently published a report on findings um, uh, of her investigations uh, in different line ministries wanted to find out if cabinet auditor general, auditor general oh. sorry i wanted to find out if cabinet discussed um, the implications of that report and if anything is going to be done about um, missing funds missing planes um, <coughs> missing equipment uh, in the next few in the recent future okay but we will let's stick to what has come from the previous <coughs> uh, anyway i will uh, for the chair will we'll find ways of dealing with that. So you, you will give you an opportunity to ask something that was discussed because otherwise we were happy that we, we had the agenda also involved. I will ask a question to the Minister of um, uh, Energy, um, if you can give us details on the tracking system that you have mentioned um, and how fuel supplies will be tracked um, in practice uh, so that uh, members of the public can know how to, if and will it be accessible <coughs> to members of the public, how will they be able to track that fuel as well or find out from your ministry um, how the fuel supply is flowing? 
Okay, thank you. Any, anybody else? All right, uh, uh, the minister mentioned the report, she mentioned uh, the issue of embracing the mono currency. But I want to ask, uh, why is that like the banking sector we've got different rates prevailing? Like sorry, you didn't say your name. Oh, sorry, I've got Chempo from ZPC. Okay, okay. Why is it that like most banks have got different rates? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. <coughs> uh, sorry. Abigail Temba from ZBC. Mm. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the public uh, is impressed at uh, the monocurrency issue. So my question is, why is there like different rates? You've got different banks are trading on different rates. Okay. I hope you got that. Yeah. Last uh, <laughs> yesterday, uh, you are coming full for the ladies. Huh? Uh, Natasha Al Jazeera, uh, to the Minister of Energy. For people, especially companies that aren't paying their electricity bills, why can't they just be cut off like what happens in other countries? Okay, so I think we'll take those four. Was the person one cut off everybody? Right? We got it? Who was it? Thank you. And thank you very much for the questions. They're all very, very important. Uh, the first question was from Silas Nara Al Jazeera. I, I'm beginning to know you each by name, which is good. And uh, his question is directed to you, Minister of Energy and uh, Power Development. When will energy issues be resolved in this country? <coughs> and I think the following question again, uh, if you can actually shed light on the mitigated factors uh, which you are doing, uh, the debt to this call, I think that was also directed to you. And then the tracking system, how that will be carried out. And finally, the last one, which was why not cut off those more than that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Today I'm going to be very careful with my facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> so that you don't memorize me. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much uh, for the. Um, uh, question, um, uh, Silas, regarding when are we going to see uh, an end to our power challenges and uh, fuel challenges. The short question is when we begin to work together and to put our national interest at the forefront. Um, with regards to power, there are a number of uh, very key determinants of our resolution of this uh, very um, difficult um, situation. Um, the first one is that we all must pay our bills. We cannot fail to pay 1.2 billion to a key utility in the country, but be happy to make all manner of demands on it. So we need to pay our, our, our bills. Uh, government has provided leadership in this respect by paying uh, the bills. Um, that uh, government um, that uh, government departments have uh, consumed over a long uh, period of time. So uh, it has also um, affected uh, payment to ESCOM. We need a culture locally and internationally to meet our obligations. The only legitimate response to a debt is to pay. If you can't pay, you negotiate with the creditor. So that's where we would like to get to. We, another key determinant is ensuring that uh, on the consumption side, we're all responsible. Uh, we're, we all should be cognizant of the fact that uh, power is extremely expensive. Extremely expensive and in our consumption of it, whether it's in a government department or in a private uh, organization or at home, we need to make sure that we are conscious of uh, the impact of our consumption of power uh, on the entire economy. So it's, a, it's a, a composite relationship for all of us. And I have no doubt that uh, you are paying your, your bills. We are going to manage the demand side. We've started uh, with my ministry. We've installed a meter. Uh, we are develop, developing a, a, a program to install meters in government uh, departments. And they, they, there is no uh, debate or argument about that. Nobody, power is not like air that we are breathing now. We don't know how much, we don't know the value. With power we know exactly 
what we owe and what we consume uh, a day. Um, similarly, the same applies to fuel. Um, I think the Minister uh, of Information in the initial remarks uh, on my portfolio did indicate <coughs> that there are still uh, numerous malpractices. I'm going to continue to engage the industry. I was uh, with them yesterday. Uh, there are proposals uh, that they are, they've made, which um, once we have uh, agreed uh, on certain positions, we'll be able to communicate. So we want to work together. We want to create um, a fair environment that allows business people to make money and uh, uh, without making the public suffer. So, as I indicated, we still have malpractices uh, in the industry. I warned the industry yesterday that the hour will come when we talk about renewal of uh, licenses. But if we need to do it earlier, we will take the necessary action to protect the interests of everyone in Zimbabwe who consumes uh, fuel. But I must add that uh, I'm very happy that we have uh, an excellent working relationship at the moment and we want to build on that. We believe that uh, we, um, uh, we can resolve a lot of uh, our issues if we continue to, to work together. So the short answer is I can't give you a time and date because I'm not in control of somebody, for example, who accesses foreign currency from our national system, buys fuel, and decides that he uh, is not going to play according to the rules. I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't uh, determine that. But this matter is urgent, and um, um, we, are, we are taking or applying all efforts to make sure that we normalize the situation. We all need to be working together. Uh, with regards to the uh, ZESA payment, um, as I said, when you owe. You must be there to acknowledge your debt, and uh, if you need a payment plan, you make the payment uh, plan. We have paid uh, 10 million out of uh, a significant amount of money. Uh, Zimbabwe will always be here. Zimbabwe will always need power, so we're going to engage our um, uh, brothers and uh, sisters in South Africa to say we have paid. Uh, what arrangements uh, can we make? They are fully appreciative of the challenges that we are facing. And uh, I'm not in a position at the moment to say precisely um, how much we are going to get from them. Uh, I'll be very happy if we are going to get uh, sufficient power to extinguish the load shedding that we are all currently uh, experiencing. The load shedding matter should be a basis for us to work together in recognition of the fact that it's very difficult to discriminate. Even if you go to the Minister of Energy's uh, home, right now there's no power. So all of us, regardless of our political affiliations, we, we meet where uh, power is necessary. So let's come together. We're very open to suggestions and I've uh, met many uh, members of the public, organizations, individuals, Yesterday, I had a conference call with a group of uh, engineers uh, in South Africa who made very interesting um, uh, suggestions to us. I've met students who have come up with contraptions that can help us to deal with some of these matters. Tracking system, this is very important. Uh, I think that we have been regulating in darkness. You can't regulate something unless you understand it. So uh, we already have a prototype. Um, which has been installed at uh, CMED, uh, very uh, robust in my view. I'm going to analyze it further and see what are the parameters we can put in there. Uh, government would like to understand uh, the fuel situation uh, as soon as fuel gets into this country. As Minister of Energy, I would like to know if there is a need for me to do that at any given time who picked up how much fuel from Masasa? What vehicle did that? And uh, where did the fuel go to with respect to service stations? I want to be able to interrogate a service station from my office or from home on my laptop or iPad 
and no, because many members of the public tell me that <coughs> this service station served three people and they say the fuel is finished. The era of lies in this sector is soon coming to an end and um, we are going to do whatever is necessary to ensure that the inconvenience uh, that uh, uh, people are experiencing uh, should only happen if we cannot um, do something about it. So uh, we are also looking at a, a rational distribution, not only of fuel by type, but a rational distribution of service stations themselves. We would like the sector, and I've discussed this with them, that at any given time, we need to be sensitive to the economic activities that are happening in the country. And so our fuel must speak to those situations. Uh, what do I mean? I mean that when we are in the wheat growing uh, season, like now, and uh, farmers need diesel, we must have, um, uh, we must be able to, to discuss and agree on what is needed where. There is no point in having uh, thousands of liters of diesel in an area uh, where, for example, there is very little uh, activity uh, of an economic uh, nature. So we want to get to that level where we direct resources where they are needed at a particular time. But we also want to be able to uh, determine where a service station should be on an informed basis. We need evidence to know um, consumption patterns and this system is going to help us uh, to do that. This system, together with other measures that government is going to take, is going to bring order in the fuel sector. We need order. If we don't have order, we'll have perennial uh, challenges that we're not able to resolve. Haru, uh, disconnections. We are not afraid of doing this. We want to encourage members of the public to pay. But even if there is no disconnection, when we don't pay our bills, we are going to be shut down by those who supply us, as um, happened with ESCOM. Um, we'll be shutting ourselves down. So Zesa or myself or government, we don't need to do anything. If we just sit, we'll get to that point where we do not have uh, power. Uh, Zesa is a legal duty to mitigate its own losses. It cannot continue to supply power to individuals or organizations uh, that do not want to pay for it and believe that this is air that we are just uh, breathing. So I want to make it clear that we would like uh, the public support, commerce and industry, local uh, authorities, all those bodies, all significant amounts of money to ZESA. ZESA must be viable. ZESA must be viable so that it can interact with the other economic uh, or commercial players on the basis of its own balance sheet. The 1.2 billion uh, weighs that organization down significantly and would like it to operate uh, on its own and get assistance uh, from government in very exceptional um, circumstances. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Minister. We want everybody's participation and everybody should pay their bills. Uh, thank you for answering all the questions. So what's left is a question from uh, Abigail Temple. And uh, I must apologize that the Minister of Finance is not here. But uh, what I'm sure I'll be able to answer you is uh, why we say we, the generality of Zimbabweans have embraced the, the, uh, the removal of the multi-currency transaction and local transactions. Uh, from the time the statutory instrument 142 of 2019 was introduced, we've seen, we've been actually interacting with a lot of public. We've been making sure that uh, we also unpack the statutory instrument so that all our general, our, our 
our populace can understand what is in that in, in statutory instrument. And I must tell you that it has been very well embraced. A lot of our Zimbabweans have not been having access to US dollars. They, those who have been working, they're actually receiving uh, local currency. And any Zimbabwean who is proud to be a Zimbabwean is very proud that the fact that now we do have our own sovereign currency. So the issues I was in Chipinga yesterday with the president with a, uh, where he went to open up the Tangata Bund Road and I must say the, there was a big crowd who was really, they were very, very happy to and uh, express their happiness to the president that uh, finally we do now have our sovereign currency. And uh, we have seen, as I rightly said earlier on, that that has actually brought down the market rates. So these are issues. As for the why uh, most banks have different rates, this is an issue which was raised in the debate and the Minister of Finance is actually still doing his interrogations and he'll be coming back to you. You know, as the Ministry, we can always organize a meeting for any persons you may want to uh, the Minister of Finance. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, the Minister of International of Foreign Affairs and International Trade would like to supplement. In, indeed, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, with some bit of international trade, there is a bit of economics in there. So I'm sure I can uh, uh, sit in the shoes of the Minister of Finance uh, uh, just as an interim answer. There is an interbank market which was introduced, and this interbank market is actually free. It is willing buyer, willing seller. And when each bank is trading, it is best it comes up with its exchange rate for that particular day. And that's why you end up having these varied uh, 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 exchange rates. And in reality, these are then congregated and then they are made uh, in, into an average. But that's why it is, a, in fact, a, an example, a classic example of a, cla a free market system which is under play here in Zimbabwe in terms of interbank market. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister S.P. Moyo, on that one. Chief Secretary, we can get another okay, round. Thank you. Okay, now we go to supplementaries, right at the back. <coughs> thank you, Takuchi Ambaku from Zim Papers TV. My first question goes to the Minister of Energy. You touched on gas, and right now, because of the power cuts, many people have resorted to gas as a source of power. What are you doing to ensure that people are also not uh, going to suffer from overpricing? And you hinted in Parliament three weeks back that you were going to work on a reserve for Zimbabwe to ensure that in times like these, uh, people will not uh, get to be overpriced. And then to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, when you were in China, were there any indications that Zimbabwe will be getting funding on the Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, are there any prospects of us getting money to, you know, boost our infrastructure? Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. My name is Perfect Shomani. Okay, I feel uh, the, the question that Haru uh, put across did not uh, or get a satisfactory answer. Uh, in that, um, Minister, I feel that uh, we, we have a list. We know people who owe Zesa. We know people who who didn't pay electricity or who have not paid electricity. Why are we treating them with kid gloves? Because at the end of the day, it is people like myself who don't, know, who don't owe anything to Zesa that uh, are in the dark every time. So why, why are we treating them like when we have the list, when we know them? Thank you. My name is Costa from New Zimbabwe. I just want to ask something. I have been prompted by the message from ESCOM. Last week, um, during the press briefing, uh, you told us that you had paid to 10 million to ESCOM, and later it turned out that it was not true. Uh, I just want to find out, could this be an indication that there is disharmony uh, in the government? 
Uh, if not, what then pressured you to told us that you had paid when in actual fact you had not? Thank you. Last one, yes. Uh, thank you so much. My name is uh, Leopold Munende. Unfortunately, my, my, my workmate, uh, Avavun's a question. I wanted to give someone an opportunity. My request is to the Minister of Energy. Our names carry what he said from last week. If you could please just uh, maybe give us an apology. Thank you. And um, also, has government considered doing an environmental assessment of uh, the effects of load shading? Recently, I was talking to people in the street, in the ghettos, and they were saying that they were resorting to burning plastics, uh, deforestation, to get... Is government are considering something like that? Thank you. Okay, so that uh, was the last one. Huh? Um, yeah, I'm talking at two, perfect at one, Costa, and Lobo, so we have Okay. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, uh, thank you, Chief Sector, and once again, thank you for the questions. So Taguchi Hambakwe is asking about uh, many people resorting to gas. Mm. What are you doing to make sure that there are no overprices? And then follows through to Perfect Room One, who says he feels that Haru's question was not answered uh, adequately, and uh, he says, and he went on to. So you have a list of people who have legacy debts. Why are you treating them with uh, gloves? And then other people are suffering. Then uh, next, the last one was uh, the ESCOM debt, 10 million. And the question is there, the someone, is that what you asked? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. I, I and then, see. of course, the last one is on environmental impact, if there is an environmental impact assessment. Flood shedding because many people are using uh, some dangerous stuff to their health. Okay, Minister. Thank you very much. The question on gas um, this is a very important uh, matter. We have challenges with uh, power, and so uh, many members of uh, the public. Um, um, are resorting to the use of uh, gas. Um, it's a source of uh, energy that we need to popularize um, so that uh, people have got uh, alternatives. Uh, some who may not even have uh, um, electricity at their residences can be able to. Um, it will also save us from uh, deforestation. This is an area that has not uh, been regulated. Uh, we need to come up with a framework, we're working on that. Uh, we prefer solutions that carry uh, players and stakeholders uh, together with the government. So uh, I met uh, this sector, um, I think um, last week, uh, we agreed uh, on the matters that we need to address. We're going to have a, a follow-up uh, meeting. But in addition to that, we also need to create the necessary regulatory environment that encourages uh, investment in this area. So uh, we are also actively engaged um, um, in, 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 that, in, that, in that respect. Of major concern, as I indicated to you, um, <coughs> was the question of pricing. Um, there are all sorts of uh, prices. Um, some people still uh, want to live in the black market uh, era with the complete uh, insensitivity to the public needs. When we issue licenses, as I've said before, it's because we've considered the public interest and we think uh, and believe that uh, the licensee is going to comply with uh, um, the conditions. Similarly, as we go forward, those who are in this business uh, must expect that government requires order. Uh, some are playing with uh, some of the products. They are sourced from all manner of places. Uh, we need to regulate uh, the appliances, the tanks that they use, and their repairs, because those are very dangerous uh, um, units and so we're coming up with a legal framework that is going to to be um, 
dealing with that. Um, perfect kids gloves. I don't know how you know what I have in my briefcase. <laughs> I'm really not interested in lists of individuals. Um, I'm interested in the ballpark figure that is there. If local authorities owe 350 million, we can't go on like that. If us as the public continue to consume power without payment, uh, we cannot um, uh, expect that this is going to go on forever. It won't. D-Day will come. And it's, it's our responsibility to ensure that we um, do not um, travel on that road. I've emphasized to Zesa the need for the debt to be collected from everyone. I'm not in a position to say I'm energy minister, so uh, don't include me in the repayments or anything of that sort. We all need to pay our debts to assure ourselves of power. I also want to make a, a specific um, uh, public appeal to commerce and industry. They also owe significant amounts of money and uh, we would, without power, they can't operate. And when they don't operate, life becomes very difficult for, for all of us. So I'm going to be engaging them to understand their take on this issue and their plans regarding payment uh, as an, uh, an industry and uh, to also to encourage them to engage ZESA on this um, very specific uh, uh, issue. Uh, you say that uh, you are affected even though you are paying. We need that to stop. There are people who are in less advantageous positions than all of us here, who have no idea what is happening, but who are affected in even more serious circumstances than us. So I, uh, <coughs> there, there will be no kid gloves. I'm not a kid, so I don't have kid gloves. Uh, we, if it needs us to get to the point uh, of uh, the knuckle bones, knuckle bear, we, we have to do that. I need that money to come to Zesa. And when it comes to Zesa, we want it to be applied to uh, situations that will <coughs> increase or improve our generation of power or our conservation of power. Conservation, I, I mean, we need more money to buy meters, many meters. And I need to agree with Zesa on the deployment program for those uh, meters. But most importantly, if an organization um, has issues of governance, if an organization has uh, porous procurement procedures, those um, acquisitions or procurement uh, processes will feed into our tariff. And we want to insulate the public from the inefficiency of an organization. So those that may have played a, a role in making uh, us get to this uh, situation, um, they, 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 they really should know that we're not going to take it lying down. Everybody who is responsible for whatever they have done must answer for it. Zesa payment, somebody wanted me to say, I'm sorry, I didn't see you it was. Um, I didn't, do, do you mind just coming back? I didn't mind. <coughs> my, my question was, last week you told us that you had paid 10 million pesos, mm -hmm. and then it turned out that it was not true. Then could be this an indication that there could be disharmony in the government? And if not, what then pressured you to tell us that you had paid when you were not paid or not? Okay, I think there was an earlier question. You didn't ask me to apologize. No, that came there after me. Oh, so, so I, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's mine. Okay, you are assuming that I was pressured. I wasn't pressured. The reason why we're here is because government wants the public and you to have information. So I was not pressured uh, about that. Neither did I lie. We don't. Uh, and, and if you ask yourself what, what would be the motive for me to say that, uh, to lie that we've paid, and at any rate, the payment has been made. And so we're simply uh, facilitating a situation where you get information regarding what is um, happening. Uh, there is no disarmament whatsoever. 
we work uh, cordially. We are extremely happy working co uh, together. We cooperate and help each other in many, many instances that may not even be in the public uh, domain. Then the apology. I didn't get the question. No, the same question you answered. No, somebody asked me to apologize. Nobody. Yes, I, I did. <laughs> I did ask. Already explained. Oh, okay. Yeah, already explained. All right, if he's happy, thank you. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm honestly not happy. I wrote two stories which carry my name. So I, I'll be very happy if, if uh, the Honorable Minister, who I so respect, does apologize. <laughs> the amount has been paid. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you most. I think you have answered adequately to those two uh, questions. Which are, there is one question which is remaining, which is from the Tabu Chambaku, and it was directed to the, uh, to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. Just coming back from Pokak in Beijing, and he's saying any funding to boost our infrastructure in our country. Thank you very much. Well, I think you recall that. Um, uh, in 2018, His Excellency the President attended uh, the FOCAC meeting in Beijing. And then that FOCAC meeting came up with uh, action plans, which are called Beijing Action Plans, and Beijing uh, Initiatives, which are about eight. And uh, it was in that FOCAC meeting that a 60 billion facility was then uh, presented. And where uh, the, uh, the rest of Africa was to access uh, in terms of their financing and funding. But that is it may. The main purpose of uh, this visit to Beijing uh, this time was uh, for the foreign ministers to go and coordinate the implementation and the effecting of this whole process which was agreed upon by the summit last year. So this is exactly what we went and did. But you must be clear already that China is already funding a lot of projects in this country and it is probably one of the uh, major investors uh, in the country. We are talking about Wange 78 power station which is 600 megawatts they've just finished uh, Kariba South, and they finished Victoria Falls Airport, and now they are uh, on the Harare, Robert Mugabe, yeah, uh, uh, International Airport, and um, uh, we are even talking about uh, the Tele One uh, project, which was an agreement of that nature of uh, 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 seventy-one million was signed uh, recently by the Minister of Finance. And uh, there are so many other investors in the different sectors of the economy and in the mining sector and so forth and so forth. So what I can say is Chinese money is working in this country. Now, over and above that, they have even gone further to indicate, as was presented earlier on here, that there was a gratis uh, to, to support of 400 million uh, RMB, which is about $60 million, uh, for the reconstruction and uh, development resulting from uh, 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 the cyclone and uh, uh, cyclone Idai. And uh, uh, we, we have got uh, also a facility which was signed, uh, 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 which is about uh, $870,000 to support the forestry uh, operations. So, in as far as the funding of infrastructure in this country uh, from China, that is exactly what is happening. And we have, of course, presented further projects uh, to, to them within the framework of the uh, eight Beijing initiatives and within the framework of that FOCAC uh, meeting so that we can continuously access. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ministers. Thank you. And over to you, Chief Secretary, once again. Thanks. Thank you very much. So we come to the end of our briefing. So we want to thank you, members of uh, India.
Honorable Ministers for taking on the questions and we will meet next week. We say bye. Thank you. Thank you.